You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Angelscapes with host Nancy Smith, your direct connection to finding your soul's power and wisdom. Join Nancy, Akashic Medium, in this interactive show to explore tools and steps you can take to create peace, calm, and confidence in your life. So now, please welcome the host of Angelscapes, Nancy Smith. And hello, this is Angelscapes, and I'm your host, Nancy Smith. And I'm here to share with you the spiritual soul power journey that is available to you. Let me show you the path that you can take to access the power of your soul to become the amazing being you really are. It's time to plug into your soul's power. And today I have Danielle Dion with us. Um, she's going to talk about um, working with the ancestors, healing with the ancestors. And Danielle Dion is a professional psychic medium. She's also an herbalist, and she's a practicing witch. Danielle has been connecting to the dead since the age of six and reading professionally for over a decade. She's the author of the book Magical Mediumship, Partnering with the Ancestors for Healing and Spiritual Development, as published through Llewellyn. Daniel owns Moth and Moon Studio, a spiritual education center. I've been there a few times. It's absolutely beautiful. Her eclectic practice draws upon a vast foundation of mediumship, her occultism, her, her craft, healing arts, spiritualism, witchcraft, herbalism, and folk magic. She's trained under internationally renowned mediums, including John Holland and Tony Stockwell, and she's studied advanced mediumship at the Arthur Finley College in Stansted, England. Danielle has also trained under prominent magical and occult teachers such as Christopher Penzak and Devin Hunter. And Danielle is an initiate in the Temple of Witchcraft and serves as a Scorpio Deputy Minister for the Death, Dying, and the Bereavement and Ancestral Connections. She enjoys hospice volunteering and co and hosts what she calls Death Cafes, which I'd love to hear more about, helping people to discuss death and make the most of their finite lives. She has enjoyed a successful career in healthcare, quality, research, and data analytics. Danielle runs Crossroads Farm, a small spirited homestead focusing on ancestral connections, magical medicinal herbs, and raising heritage breed livestock. And you can see uh, visit Danielle on her website, d a n i e l l e d i o n d i o n n e dot com. So welcome, Danielle. I'm so glad to have you here. Boy, that was a lot that you've done in your life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for having me, Nancy. I'm excited to be here. Oh, you're so welcome. So welcome. So I thought it, the perfect timing, um, having you come on on October 27th, just before um, Halloween. This is a celebration. Um, the, we've got the Day of the Dead coming up, and Halloween celebrates um, pretty much everything. in it, it spooks and ghouls and scary things. So let's so let's talk about the most scariest thing in our lives, which are uh, the process of of um, you know, death and dying, and what happens after we we and how to talk to our ancestors, those that went before us. Awesome! So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I think it's a perfect time of year to be chatting about the ancestors and uh, you know confronting our mortality as well. I think that's something that I'm really passionate about talking with people. Um, but like you said, yeah, I think there is this sort of uh, you know impression that this is the ooky spooky time of year, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. I'm somebody who uh, celebrates Samhain, um, and so this weekend we have, you know, Halloween celebrations, we have a full moon, uh, the, you know, the, the um, uh, Samhain is the, you know, kind of Celtic 
uh, holiday, but in the witchcraft tradition I'm part of is celebrated as a Sabbath, uh, one of the main eight, um, you know, celebrated agricultural uh, holidays in a pagan practice. But like you said, it's also the, uh, you know, the time of year cross traditions, cross culturally, where we honor the dead. It's, it's kind of the time of year that we think of our dead and, right. uh, and maybe yeah. feel them closer because of the idea of thinning of the veils. So um, perfect timing for this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're both mediums. We both um, we both have that sense of continuation after the change called death. So I, I feel like you and I have done a lot more work than the average bear around what happens um, with our mortality and after our mortality. So tell me, let's talk a little bit about normalizing this. You know, this is something that happens to all of us, as Bugs Bunny says, none of us are getting out of here alive. <laughs> so... So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, your work with the ancestors, I find it very comforting that those that have gone before us are still here, are still there, living, you know, living, um, growing, learning, um, and they're here to help us as well. So, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I love what you just said about uh, feeling their presence and, and as mediums and as people, you know, just that know dead people, because uh, if we don't, we certainly will. And like you said, nobody gets out alive here, uh, that the ancestors are comforting. And that uh, when I was a kid, I had a lot of death, which is sort of what spurred my interest into mm-hmm. spirituality oh. and spiritualism and, uh, and and witchcraft and all of these sort of wonderful um, paths that I am passionate about. Uh, and I had experiences when I was a kid that were really comforting. So I was fortunate in that regard, um, where I would see my best friend who passed away when he was six. I would get messages uh-huh. from him, from my great grandmother. And that, uh, you know, I started talking about when I was six, seven, eight years old and really never fell out of it. Maybe the way that I experienced it did shift and change. But uh, that to me, right out of the gate in my life, sort of said, yeah, like, I think that they can come through and that they can be part of our lives. So. Okay, so you- Wow. So your experience okay. as, a, as a youngster, six years old, losing yeah. your best friend, I'm so sorry. Um, and, but it, it didn't come to you as a scary thing. It came to you as a comforting thing. Talk to me about that a little bit. Yeah, I have. Uh, I love looking back. I actually have little kid journals that I wrote in like second grade and third grade where I would sort of talk about the experiences that I had. And, um, you know, my parents actually, they were so funny about it because I think they, uh, I would tell them, oh, my friend said this or I saw my friend. Sometimes I'd very physically see him, uh, which is not how I, you know, for the most part experience spirit today. Um, it, w- it would be like he would be in my room or I would see him. I'd be out in public and I would see him you know, kind of off in the distance. So there was this really strong clairvoyant uh, piece of, of connecting with him. But I would also get messages via symbols, sort of nature signs. I've always been really connected mm-hmm. with nature and animals and plants and felt the ancestors and, and particularly my loved ones, um, particularly this best friend, but also um, a couple other folks that had passed away in sort of that same amount of time, uh, kind of come through and bring me messages. And that was always validating. It was always sort of like the breadcrumbs on the trail. Uh, So if I was, you know, struggling with something in particular or um, upset about something, I was a pretty quiet, shy child. That was just sort of a way that I could feel them um, and and, uh, felt reassured by them. And I think, you know, even now in my practice, I I do spend a lot of time honoring the ancestors, honoring my dead and, and still seek out that companionship. Maybe the way that I commune with them has changed and shifted and developed over time, but I still take comfort in their presence and the way that they show up for me. So what are some of those ways that, that you honor them and work with them? Yeah. Um, so I think that, and I think maybe what I'll start saying here too, is I don't think we have to just be a medium to go and commune with our ancestors. We can look across time and traditions. Uh, there's so many practices of honoring the dead and venerating our ancestors. And so, uh, you know, sharing of their memory um, is, is a really easy way at this time of year. We were kind of talking the idea of this, this dark time of year, Samhain. Um, this is oftentimes where we're kind of gathering together and, and sharing stories. So that can be one really beautiful way. But for me, in my practice, it's a lot of informal and formal uh, devotional acts, if you will. So I like to um, have a, an altar in my home that has, a, uh, that has pictures of my deceased on it. So I can, you know, I, I see them. Uh, every day they're, they're, you know, in my living room, kind of between where my kitchen and living room are. So I pass mm-hmm. them every morning, uh, informally, like one of my favorite things that I like to do that I encourage people all the time to do is if you make coffee in the morning, I'm a tea and coffee person, but when mm-hmm. I make my pot of coffee in the morning, I pour one for me and I put out one for the ancestors. 
Really? I just kind of say to them, yeah, yeah I do. And you can do, it's just, it's, it's mutual reciprocation. I think when you are working with spirit, when you are working with them and you're asking them to kind of come forward in your life, it's, it's through putting in the energy um, and saying, hey, I'm inviting you to participate in my life. Come be part of my life. Uh, you know, we are part of each other and, and we can get into types of ancestors. So that's your blood relatives, but others as well, you know, come forward. Uh, I think the ancestors are really keyed into the living Okay. Because they were living. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So your ancestors, we're going to come back in, a, in a, just a minute. I want to just talk more about oh, sure. who, who are our ancestors exactly. Because I always think of them, grandma, grandpa, you know, and, and they have to, but I think you have a much broader way of looking at it. So um, you can um, access more information about Danielle at Danielle Dion. Um, dot com and uh, let's see we're going to be back in a few minutes uh, we are on BBM Global Network tune in radio this is Angelscapes and I'm your host Nancy Smith have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve do you even know the kind of attention you want or need you are not alone Alice Aspen March is here to help Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation and welcome back you're listening to angelscapes with nancy smith on bbm global network also tune in radio iheart radio and spotify and i want to tell you we're going to take calls starting around 8 30 to uh you know if you have questions for danielle and uh, the number is 866-451-1451. So we're talking to Danielle Dion. You can find her um, on her website, Danielle, with two L's, ending with the E, D-I-O-N-N-E dot com. And um, you can also look her up on the, her studio, mothandmoonstudio.com. Tons of activities, online virtual activities going on right there. She's got a real good one coming up this um, later this week. So, Danielle, let me start talking to you about, let's go back to the ancestors. <laughs> Who are they and how do you have a relationship with them? Yes, absolutely. So I think when people hear the term ancestors, sometimes they think, oh, is that, you know, my long, long, you know, way back, great, 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 great grandmother. And to that, I would say yes, um, as one of my wonderful teachers always will say. Um, but it also is your recently deceased. Uh, so that could be the people that you knew in this life. So ancestors, when we talk about connecting to them, there are many different types and ways to kind of categorize them. But basically, uh, I like we were actually kind of having a conversation before about this, the idea of the beloved dead. So one way that right. you could look at your ancestors is those in spirit that were your loved ones. Um, so those that, uh, you know, you knew on this journey as part of that. Uh, and even those that maybe you didn't. I have a great grandmother that I didn't meet in life, but I would consider her to be of my beloved dead because I have a really strong connection with her um, in spirit. So certainly the beloved dead would be a type of ancestor or would be some of the ancestors that we would commune and connect with. 
but you can have ancestors of blood. So clearly that, you know, that's what comes to mind for most people. So that's, you know, grandmother, that's your uncle, that's, you know, um, people that are related to you by blood, but it doesn't stop there. I think one of the reasons that the ancestors tend to come through for us and that the dead want to work with us is because they had the experience of being living. <laughs> um, and so they know what it's like to struggle and to be challenged and to also have, you know, wonderful victories. So um, certainly the blood wants us to succeed. So even when we didn't have uh, super close relationships to some of our bloodline, sometimes they still show up as ancestors that want to work with us. We can talk more about that if it yeah. comes up. Um, but it's not just that. I think, you know, if you had uh, people in your life that nurtured you, we say family first in that kind of idea of, you know, who supports you and who takes care of you. But sometimes that's chosen family. So you might have people in your life that you are really, really close to that aren't related by blood. And they certainly are ancestors that can come through, that can work with you um, and, and do very much so. Um, you can have uh, ancestors that are that you didn't necessarily know, but are part of, uh, you know, the ancestors of affinity. They're uh, the, the people, the dead that are connected to you via your cultural identity, your vocation, uh, you know, um, for example, I have a lot of healthcare workers in my family. I worked in healthcare for over 10 years and I have right. a lot of nurses particularly in my family. And so I would often call to them. Uh, and so to just, you know, not just the nurses that I knew, the, the uh, you know, healthcare workers that I knew, but those in that tradition uh, or those that, you know, were in that line of work that wanted to come and support me. So even some ancestors that I didn't know will show up because they have a kinship, a connection to your work in the world. Similarly, oh, i um, yeah, I, I love that. And I think that that's yeah. been really powerful for me, too. Um, and even, you know, cultural identity, if you, you know, if you identify as, uh, uh, as a queer person, calling to the queer ancestors is something that I have seen, you know, um, flourish, uh, you know, in the past few years and, and, and people working very closely with. So, again, doesn't mean you need to know every person uh, that would identify as that, but certainly come through uh, to support uh, when we acknowledge and call on them. Same with ancestors okay. in different traditions, all of those kind of, uh, you know, um, folks in spirit, if you will. That's really interesting. Now, now we, um, you're calling on on somebody to help you. Um, what I have two two things popped into my head. Why do they want to help us? Like, what's the purpose of our lives, and then going um, on to be spirit on the other side? And why are they coming back to help us? So, what do you suppose that's all about? Yeah, I certainly think when we go to spirit, uh, you know, we're not just sitting there twiddling our thumbs. I think that we are, you know, reflecting and growing. And I think there is, you know, um, work to be done, if you will. But I think one of the things that can be powerful, you know, is the connection uh, or potentially is, is the connection to, you know, the living, those that you are connected to via one of these types of, um, you know, uh, ancestors, if you will. And um, they care because they've had that human experience, like I was saying. So they are the closest to us. You know, when we look at other types of spirits or other, you know, uh, energies that we can work with, they know very much what it's like to be us. Um, and they may have particular, uh, you know, skill sets that are of benefit that maybe we, maybe we would want uh, some help in our life for. So they can show up in that way. I don't think that they, you know, can, uh, they're not completely, you know, granting, you know, the lottery numbers or, or making really big, no, yeah. uh, you know, they can't Darn solve it. all of yeah. our problems. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> or, or, or we would, a lot of us would be, uh, you know, in different positions, but I do think that they support. I think that they, much like I was kind of sharing when I was little, you know, provide breadcrumbs for us, provide guidance. I work with them uh, and, and how they support me often is through uh, divination. So, you know, checking in, you know, am I making the right decision? Can you help provide, uh, you know, guidance to me around something that is, you know, particularly uh, important to me in my life? And that can be formal where I'm asking particularly about something, or it can be allowing the space and time to commune with them in a practice to be open to their messages, which maybe are not, I'm asking for something specific, but something that they want to bring forward that maybe I hadn't thought of that could be of, of use and of benefit. So certainly I work with them in that way. Um, but healing is really big too. Uh, one of the things that I think mediumship is so beautiful for is that it provides opportunities for healing, uh, you know, between the living and the dead. But I think ancestrally connecting and opening up and honoring the dead and allowing for time and space um, for, you know, anything from recognition of patterns in family um, or, you know, healing potential wounds or traumas that you see repeated. So that can absolutely be something. Um, that's been really powerful in my life that I've kind of worked with, with them on and continue to work on. 
Um, and finding, you know, a particular ancestor or guide to help with that has been uh, really a benefit. Well, so um, let's yeah, talk well, a little okay. bit about identifying that healing, because um, what is what is that ancestor healing? So as a medium, we've talked about this. You got the jerk that was really hurt you <laughs> and is now gone. And you're like breathing a sigh of relief. Then you go to see a medium and guess who shows up? What, um, <laughs> so what, what do you do with that? And. Uh, it was, it, it, so there's an opportunity for healing there, but there's also an opportunity to get hurt again. Is that possible to get hurt again from somebody who's already passed or is there something else going on there? Let's talk about that. Yeah. I think in the mediumship session, there can be beautiful opportunities for healing, but you want to do it responsibly and ethically. Um, and so you want to always be checking in with your person if something sensitive comes up in a situ in a reading um, and making sure that there's consent to bring that person through or that, they, you know, that we've created the right container for whatever is needing to come through as a message um, to be received in a way that's going to be a benefit to all. Okay. Um, so, so we're yeah. going to, um, so I, I just want to dive a little bit deeper into the mm -hmm. healing and the challenge of the healing and what that means Definitely. healing, you know, kind of like it's becoming whole and becoming, you know, stronger or whatever that is. So we're going to take a break and when we come back, um, we'll have more of this conversation. Um, and, uh, this is, um, Angel Scapes and I'm your host, Nancy Smith, and I'm on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio and we'll talk in a few minutes. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale, an international initiative called Nurse Nursing Now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing, Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. And welcome back. This is Angelscapes, and I'm your host, Nancy Smith. We're going to take calls uh, on our next round, and uh, you can dial in at 866-451-1451. Start dialing in now so we know you're there. Um, and we're talking to da Danielle Dion and about the ancestors and mediumship and how the ancestors can help us and how we can have relationships with ancestors. And I, I think we were talking about a lot of things, and I, I just I, – but the question I wanted to ask is um, – you have this book called Magical Mediumship, Partnering with the Ancestors for Healing and Spiritual Development. I want to hear more about your book, and I especially want to hear about healing and spiritual development for us here and for them over there. What's that? Why? I mean, what are they doing? What are we doing? Um, what's the purpose in that? Yeah, I'm really excited about this book. It's sort of a labor of love and, and um, you know, has sort of evolved from my practice. I think for a long time, I sort of divorced, uh, you know, the spiritualist mediumship path that I was on with my other, you know, ancestral devotional practices and, and witchcraft. And really, they go so well hand in hand. And whatever kind of path you've been on spiritually, incorporating ancestral reverence and working with them and inviting them to partner with you can just be so much more enriching. 
And I like the idea, um, and for me it has just been so powerful, uh, to lead a spiritual life with them, to ask them to partner with you, to walk beside you in this, and to, to partner, quite literally. Um, because, again, you know, we sort of, we have their support. And when we do well in this life, and when we take care of ourselves and work on our own uh, you know, stuff uh, that maybe is inherited, uh, maybe has long, you know, uh, long been traumatical, pa- traumatical trauma, uh, traumatic Tra- patterns yeah. that have been in, in our lineage. We are honoring them. We are helping them heal potentially in some regards. So doing our work in itself is really wonderful. And so I know that I've led development circles for a really long time and I love it. Um, and sometimes people kind of see mediumship as a hobby or it's something that's applied elsewhere. Really doing this work with the dead in your own life is going to make your mediumship stronger, but is also just going to, even if you're not interested in mediumship, live a more fully aware life. When we invite death to walk beside us, we live more fully. Um, so the book talks a lot about, you know, uh, how do we, you know, if, we, if we're interested in mediumship, what is mediumship? How do we go through those processes? Again, I have a lot of the... Um, development side from the spiritualist part of my path that has been of benefit there. But then what is magic? How do we partner to make and enact, enact our will in this lifetime in accordance with support from the dead? Uh, that can be super enriching. Uh, so I talk a lot about that. But I also talk about, you know, um, ways to honor the dead, ways to do, you know, like I was talking about, for me, it's a lot of the checking in, asking for guidance, asking for, you know, doing formal divination doing my own healing work uh, through, for me, it's a lot of doing meditation practices, doing visualization work, um, doing rituals of forgiveness, something that I think comes up a lot from the mediumship side, but I do a lot is end of, um, you know, hospice care and and serving in sort of the realm of end of life. Um, A lot of the things that we could resolve by having better conversations and connections like this side, uh, can be resolving, can resolve a lot of the, the challenges that we have, the hangups that we have with our dead. So kind of, uh, you know, inviting death and, and being aware of that, having good conversations and being better living people helps us be better future ancestors, but I think also okay. feels forward and backward. So lots on that. Um, yeah. So and let's go back. Talk a lot about, yeah, oh, go ahead. Okay. oh, no, you said, <laughs> uh, so we could be better ancestors. I'm like, what? So, um, so, mm-hmm. So the healing, so we can be better ancestors. And I haven't thought about myself as being an ancestor. I'm still working on grandma. So um, being a grandmother. <laughs> so um, healing in this lifetime is is very important for us as we progress. So this, this so as a medium, I realize this lifetime is temporary. This is like a stop off. We are spirit having a human experience. And so there's a purpose for this. This is we're going somewhere, we're learning mm-hmm. something, we're doing something. And, um, and so our work is important here and our work can help our ancestors and our ancestors can help us do our work. So this partnership that we're saying is, I, I just want to say it's so important. We had talked about the beloved dead, um, right? So we we're talking about those that have, have gone to the other side who we love dearly. But then we, it, in a conversation earlier, we talked about the mighty dead, the um, the which were the enlightened people who have had lifetimes, but now they're mighty. They've done their healing work. They've done their integration work. And they're, um, let's talk about the purpose of healing and where it takes us to. What is that about? Yeah. I think I love connecting with the mighty dead and the mighty dead, uh, like you had said, it's, it's the enlightened dead. Uh, it's the sanctified dead. So we can look at it as those, um, you know, in, in different traditions, uh, we might call them different things. We might call them saints or bodhisattvas. We can look at them as the masters, the ascended masters. Um, they are those that want to help and, and are, you know, sort of stepping outside uh, the normal process of death to come through and to be of support in kind of a grander scheme. Uh, if you will. And I think that um, we can do that. I don't think that's, you know, I don't think that has to be people from long ago or it doesn't have to be, you know, super rare. If we do the work here in this lifetime, like you were saying, if we work on our soul, if we craft ourselves and we heal and we, you know, recognize, it doesn't mean we're going to be perfect by any means. We, uh, you know, can be of service and continue to be of service. So that's something that um, you know, I honor in my practice, I invite, you know, everything from, you know, we might think of sort of big names um, as mighty dead, but even some of the, the spiritualists that have gone before, Emma Hardinge Britton is a, is a mm-hmm. somebody I would consider the mighty dead 
that comes forward that I honor and I invite her to, to partner with me and has been really um, powerful for me. Oh my yeah. gosh. Emma, I never, Emma Hart is Britain. How cool is that? That's, um, yes. that, uh, she was an amazing medium in her day. So we're going to um, take another break. This happens so fast. We, we get talking and then all of a sudden <laughs> it's break time. Uh, we come back. We'll, yeah. we'll talk more about um, your book. I'd like to talk more about something that some things that are coming up um, in the next few days. And, um, we are on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and this is Angelscapes, and I am your host, Nancy Smith. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the veteran spoke-style wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBC. BBM Global Network. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. Hi, welcome back. This is Angel Scapes, and I'm your host, Nancy Smith. We are taking calls now, 866-451-1451, if you want to call in. And Danielle and I are going to keep talking about um, the ancestors. And one of the ways that I know in your book, Magical Mediumship, partnering with ancestors for healing and spiritual development has a lot of ways that you can connect and partner with your ancestors, a lot of through what, through rituals, through prayer, through meditation, some of the things that you talked about, right? So people yes, want to know. Absolutely. So yeah, you want so to know want more. more. Definitely. I talk about my practice. I talk about a lot of the, you know, sort of traditions around honoring the ancestors, creating ancestral altars, different practices that I've, I've found to be uh, effective for inviting them into your life to connecting with them. Um, so check that all out there. And uh, yeah, and we also talked the last section of the book is really about uh, confronting death and uh, looking at, you know, what do we want um, as, as mortal beings as we, you know, eventually will die as well. So something I'm also very passionate about talking about. Beautiful, beautiful. I, I, I have to add in my, in the shamanic training that I had done years ago, um, that was also one of the first things that we covered is, is when you meet death and we did a lots of practices to meet death, then you meet your life. So it's really, really true. Um, but I, I also, um, you, in our pre-interview, we talked a lot about forgiveness and forgiveness as a, um, as a tool for working with the ancestors and for moving forward in your life. And you had some really awesome thoughts on forgiveness. Um, and working with your yeah. ancestors. Yeah, I find that um, some of the most powerful messages that come through mediumship wise, but of the work that we can do for ourselves and to sort of heal, uh, you know, potentially uh, challenging aspects in, in our line or, or with an ancestor in some way have to do um, with, what we, you know, uh, the 
with, you know, do you forgive me? I forgive you. I love you. Thank you. Those are things that I think if we can clear that up here as, as living beings <laughs> um, and have those conversations, uh, you know, before death happens, that can help alleviate some of the, the baggage that we may take with us to the other side that may come through. But for me, um, you know, looking at, for example, we had a lot of really interesting eating disorder patterns in my family, as well as some uh, sexual abuse trauma. So I don't need to go into all the lovely details on that, but I don't think that's uncommon, unfortunately. And right. so looking to see how far back in the line there was. And so inviting through ritual, inviting through these communications um, and connections, uh, spirit, uh, you know, of an ancestor that wants to kind of take up the, the mantle to kind of um, look at that in the line and bring healing to it and kind of witness you and witness them can be really powerful. So uh, again, you don't have to, you know, you want to work with where you are. You don't just want to go dig up things that are not ready to be resolved. And I think it's a continual process, but I think doing your own inner healing work in conjunction, if it has ties to maybe what's happened in the family or in, in other people's situations in your life can be really powerful. Um, so well, you talk about in the book as well. Oh, I'd love to talk. Yeah, that that sounds very cool. We talked about earlier in the show. We've talked about mediumship and talking to the um those the 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 ones that have gone before us as if they're you know partnership and talking to them have a communication and a connection. But sometimes it's just not possible. It's like um like I said, the mm -hmm. the jerk that passed to the other side. I don't want to hear mm -hmm. from that person anymore. We could still do you were you were saying to me you could still do the forgiveness. You could still do the healing even though you really necessarily don't want to have a mediumship connection to that person. Talk to me about that a little bit. Yeah. I think that not everybody, uh, not everybody who goes to spirit is at equal level. So I think people, you know, who have lived a full life that are sort of done their work in some ways have an easier transition. Sometimes we have, you know, jerks in our family or jerks in connection to us, and they may not be in a great place when they go to spirit, and they may not be ready to come forward with, you know, forgiveness. They might be working on their own stuff, or they're not even at a place to be a healthy and integrated uh, connection in a mediumship session or for an ancestral work. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't still work with them, but really for me, I find going to another ancestor who is in that, you know, in that position to be healthy and to um, be in a place that's going to support uh, you and in and, and connection around the issue, but really actually leaning to the ancestor and asking them to facilitate healing and help for the person who is kind of, you know, a jerk uh, uh, and, and, you know, didn't cross in, um, you know, hasn't resolved things uh, at the time of death. So I think the ancestors can help other ancestors, and it's not always our job to force them to be, you know, uh, work on your stuff. Um, but I think by taking interest in the line, by taking interest in the family situation, realizing and recognizing that, that can bring attention. The, the ancestors are so excited when we show up because this may have been a lost practice in your family. Um, and so the fact that you are saying, hey, you're part of me, I'm part of you, let's, let's connect on this, they're more than willing to, um, you know, the ones that are able to show up and help and heal. But that can be for others in the family line as well, I find. Well, I've heard, um, yeah, it totally makes sense. What, And I've heard that when we say you're not going to do it through um, ancestral practice, but when we begin to heal our stuff, and if it's connected mm -hmm. to how somebody else has hurt, hurt us, we actually heal ourselves, but we're actually offering healing back to those who were here before us. Do you, does, that, do you, does that ring true? Yeah. And, and so, and then the bottom line here is, you, you can do it now and heal now and, and, and integrate <laughs> This stuff, or you can do it after. You're, you, but you still need to heal. You still need to come to terms. You still need to integrate the experience. Now, how would you weigh in on that statement? Yeah, I think the more that we work on ourselves, uh, the better we will. Uh, the, the better that we will be on the other side. Um, and so I think doing what we can and knowing that we're not perfect and that we, you know, we are living a human experience here, but certainly lessons to be worked out. Uh, that can be of benefit when we transition. Um, and I think that, you know, we think about our descendants, you know, the, uh, as a future ancestor, uh, what are we carrying? Can we clear up anything now that can be a benefit to the future, however we're connected. And right. the other thing I wanted to say, too, um, that sometimes when we have a jerk person who goes to spirit, like I had a, I have somebody in my family who was not a nice person, who was incarcerated, who did many things that were not super wonderful. Um, 
not to me, but in kind of similar scenarios that I had faced, when they died after some time they had been in spirit, they started coming to me and they were showing up, you know, mediumistically in, in development groups, but then also in my ancestral practice. And they have been a fantastic uh, partner. Um, and I think really what's, what happened there, and again, it's, it's, it's permission based. You want to say, am I consenting to partner with you? Um, you want to put boundaries and barriers up. That's something that you can always do, you know, anytime you're working with a spirit. Um, but has been a wonderful ancestor. And I think it's because he has a lot to feel that he atoned for. So we honor Beautiful. him and he's, a, he's got a seat at the table. So, and he sounds like he worked on the other side. Sounds like he, he faced a few things. I, yeah. I think that's yeah, another piece of, on it. So, so it's another piece of, of transitioning from the human life to the spirit life is you still have stuff to do. You're, you're, you're not off scot-free. There's, there's still right. um, repercussions not hell, but still repercussions. Right. So, um, so we're going to go on a break, and um, wanted to remind everyone to. This is Danielle Dion. You can go to her site, DanielleDion.com, or MothAndMoonStudio.com, or you can find her on Facebook, Danielle Dion Psychic Medium, and you can also find me at Angelscapes uh, net or uh, Facebook Nancy at Angelscapes. And both of us are willing to t- take any questions after the fact. Um, so this you're listening to Angelscapes with Nancy Smith on BBM Global Network, also TuneIn Radio and iHeartRadio and Spotify. We'll be right back. MJ Domit is the owner of Expect to be Empowered, a company whose specialty is empowering people to live their best life by following their heart and accepting themselves unconditionally. After studying and making personal changes, MJ now focuses on giving others tools for self-empowerment. She provides individual and group workshops for people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually blocked. Inspired by her work at Expect to be Empowered, MJ authored the book Waves of Blue Light, Heal the Heart and Free the Soul with accompanying empowerment cards. She is a Spirit Book of the Year Gold Medal Living Now Book Award winner. And her book is a number one Amazon bestseller in spirituality and was a 2012 gold medal winner recognized as the Living Now Spirit Book of the Year. An inspirational speaker, MJ will show you how you can repurpose every area of your life. Your life did not just happen to you. You chose it, which means you can change it. Visit www.expecttobeempowered.com or call 866-264-8024. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations in classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Sheikh Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. And welcome back. We're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is Angelscapes. I'm your host, Nancy Smith. And we've been talking about the ancestors. We've been talking about death. We've been talking about the progression from our lives, what we do, and into the ne- the other the other world, the other side with Danielle Dion. And Danielle, what I really would want to hear from you, how do you work with people? How What are you doing out there in the world, and how can people you know, connect with you. Absolutely. Uh, Thank you. Yes. So I have the book coming out. I'm really excited for that. That has lots of uh, wonderful, you know, expanding on what we've talked about here and more. Um, that comes out in December. Um, I run Moth and Moon Studio, uh, and so we, we're online for right now because of the world. Um, but I offer a lot of development groups from a mediumship perspective. I'm very interested in trans mediumship and trans in, in, in a broader context than just in the mediumship uh, side of things. Um, but I also have psychic development groups. I teach classes on ancestors. Um, I'm actually part of a lot of, uh, I've got some events coming up. I'm part of the Witches' Sabbath that's coming up uh, next weekend. Um, you can go online and find out more about that. I have a mediumship uh, gallery, uh, Messages from Beyond, that is this Thursday night, if anyone would like to join. Um, But yeah, I just do, and actually do a lot of mediumship sessions and psychic uh, sessions as well. I do herbalism and integrative healing work. 
Um, and I also am somebody who really likes to talk about death. And so uh, with the lead Scorpio minister at the Temple of Witchcraft uh, for the last, you know, four or five years, I think now, we've been leading death cafes. And recently we've just changed that to the format of mortal musing. So it's a little bit um, more spirituality based. But what that is, it's a free open uh, discussion on uh, no agenda about uh, death. And so that can range from anything about the spiritual side of things, but also, you know, how do you talk to your loved ones about what you, how you want your wishes to be upheld? Um, what do you want to have happen to your body? It's really the belief that the more we talk about death, the more that we become comfortable with it, the more we will make of our finite lives. So I have a Mortal Musings um, is on the calendar on mothandmoonstudio.com. That's on November uh, 16th, I believe, but we hold those monthly as well. So um, lots so of things to engage with me if you're interested. <laughs> So that's Moth and Moon Studio, M-O-T-H and M-O-O-N studio.com, just to be be clear. But this um, very interesting um, e- online evening of mediumship is coming up October 29th on Thursday, like you said, which should be a really um, interesting thing to watch if you have not observed mediumship. Lots of times... Um, People are new to mediumship and they're not quite sure what to expect. So I really recommend that you, um, now that there's so many online things, you can sneak in and watch and see what's going on. And it's not that scary and see the loving, caring messages. And we were just talking, Danielle, about um, I feel that the messages from spirit, from our ancestors coming through, has changed its tone since since COVID has hit, since since all these changes are coming. And spirit's very concerned. They're very much aware and very much wanting to be helpful to us. So we really um, be interesting to hear what you say October 29th. And your book is like, you could pre-order it, right, on Amazon? Yes, it is available for pre-order and you'll get it on December 8th when it comes out, which I'm very excited for. And um, yeah, like you were saying too, I think in this time, we think back about spiritualism and sort of when there has been, uh, you know, surges of interest in communing with the dead, often after um, big bouts of, of death. Uh, you know, we had the Civil War, you know, after there are, you know, periods, even the 1919 Spanish influenza, we sort of see these blips and in, in interest in this. And I think, you know, mediumship has been on the rise. Um, and I think the more, you know, that people are coming to this from a, you know, helpful healing and empowering place is really a benefit. Um, and when we listen yeah. and tap into the spirit world, it's so, so important and so powerful. So I think it's not coincidental that people might be feeling, uh, you know, the thinning of the veils extra strong this year, or just the pull and, and, you know, wanting to connect in with the ancestors, actually connecting with ancestors that have survived epidemics and plagues has been really integral in my practice this year, you know, just as a human going through what's happening, never mind, uh, you know, the, uh, all the other aspects of, of self. Um, and so, yeah, I think it'll be really interesting to see where mediumship evolves over the next you know, right now and then uh, into the future in the future of this year. Yeah, I had a friend of mine um, yeah. quoted some statistics to me. I don't know where he found them, but that the right now the fastest growing religions are Wiccan, you know, witchcraft, and yeah. uh, which is a religion, and spiritualism, which is also a religion. And um, in Britain, uh, over in the UK, in Britain, um, it was after World War Two. It's spiritualism yeah. is huge over there. So now it's becoming witchcraft is also becoming much bigger there too, as a way to connect to a source, a higher power, or to way to understand mm-hmm. how life works. Um, there's been so much misinformation about both of these religions. It's kind of interesting and and um, satisfying to talk about it on on this show and stuff like that. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit, if, if you've said everything, we talked a little bit about soul soul's progression and the concept of soul. So when we talk about the ancestors and we talk about us now, there's another aspect to this, the soul aspect. To, and um, can you talk just a tiny bit, drop into that, um, what that means to you? Yes, I write a lot about this in the book, and it, I could probably go on for a long time about this, but the model, I like to talk about it in models. I have a, I'm an analytical person as much as I, I do all this that might be perceived as woo. Uh, it helps me conceptualize the experiences that, and, and also the messages that I receive from the spirit world. And so one of the ways, I guess actually what I could maybe say that, that people might resonate with is more from a shamanic perspective in some regards about what is the soul. Um, and to me, there are different aspects of the soul. 
And I think when we, uh, you know, that we are working on in this life, we are sort of special in this incarnation where we have the blood that runs through us that is connecting us to our, our you know, our heritage and ancestral, you know, bloodline. We have, you know, this, this spark and, and spirit in us, uh, you know, of who, you know, for me, it's Danielle who has a farm, who does the mediumship, who's connecting the ancestors, but drives the key of soul. And then mm-hmm. we have the higher aspects that has more to do with the wisdom, the, the, you know, less caring about the personal aspects, but is more about higher lessons and where we're going. And I think we're in, you know, an interesting position to be all of those together at once right now. Um, and we can engage different aspects when we do work with the dead. Um, so, okay. and, and, and can uh, craft. Yeah. I know we have to go. <laughs> no, no, no. There you do. Yeah. Great. So, um, yeah, we're going to, we're going to I know what's talk about soul. I want to talk about soul. Soul power living is my life's blood. Um, so we're going to yeah. go on a break now. You are living, uh, you're listening to Angelscapes with Nancy Smith on VPM Global Network. Also, tune in radio, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. These are podcasts. These are recorded, even live. So they do go on iHeartRadio, and you can find um, boldbravemedia.com slash shows slash Angelscapes and find the recorded versions as well. So um, so we're going to, let's see, I'm going to go on a break. We'll be right back. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. And welcome back. This is Angelscapes. I'm your host, Nancy Smith, and we are winding down this episode with Danielle Dion and about the ancestors, about healing and the progression through life. Um, and so do you have any last words you'd like to add or, or things you'd like to um, leave with the audience? Yeah, I would just say it's a beautiful time of year, uh, although we can do it all year long, to honor your dead, honor your ancestors. If it's not something that you've thought about in this capacity before, maybe, um, you know, pour a a clear glass of water, uh, light a candle, maybe uh, make a cup of tea or coffee and sit down and, and call to your beloved dead. Say their names, share a memory or a story about them and just tell them that you love them and invite them into your life. I think that it is a rich practice. There's so much more to it, but I think this is a beautiful time of year. Even if you do something simplistic like that is, is a, uh, a lovely way to, to connect and commune and honor them. Sure. As I love those stories, I totally love those stories. I'll be thinking of a memory of my, of my dad. And all of a sudden um, I'm remembering something that I I didn't remember before. And then, Oh my gosh, dad is here. Mm -hmm. He's talking to me. It's such a natural, natural progression. And it it comes through kind of like your imagination comes through your feelings and it sneaks up on you. Like you don't even realize it's, it's happening. So I don't know. Do you have that experience? It's very gentle. It's very loving. 
for yeah, the most gentle, part. Gentle, loving, subtle. It, and it's exactly that. And I think that sometimes when people are wanting, you know, that big mediumship situation for themselves, uh, you know, it's it's not the same as when you go see a medium, but it is um, it is powerful. So I think acknowledging it, saying, hey, is that you do that again? Show me more. I invite you. I'm so grateful for you. You know, I'm thinking of you. I ha- I smell that cigarette smoke. Um, I know that's you, Grampy, you know, whatever it may be. So acknowledging them and, and asking them for more and to have that continuation right. is a, a good way to kind of get uh, familiar with it and develop it. Absolutely. More. And you, you can also say, you know, I'm thinking of you, I miss you, but I never understood why you did this or why you said this. And I'm still heartbroken mm-hmm. over that. You know, it's, and they're not, it's not going to chase them away. You can, you can talk honestly to the dead, to the, to those who have yes. passed. So sometimes they so, very much want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, they do. They, they really, really do. So we, we just have a couple of minutes left here. I want to remind you that Danielle Dion.com, D-A-N-I-E-L-L-E-D-I-O-N-N-E.com is, you know, she's, she does readings. Uh, so as, as do I, mediumship readings, as well as some really wisdom um, sessions that you could have with her. So check her out on her website. Check, and I also am available for readings, Nancy, uh, angelscapes.net on my website or email me, Nancy, at angelscapes.net. So we both want to support and love you in this time um, and connecting with your loved ones and your ancestors. Um, and don't forget to look up mothandmoonstudio.com. Look at her events um, for the whole studio. They have some amazing things going on there. And um, I just want to kind of sign off with you a little bit here. So remember, um, Just to, um, you know, embrace your soul, relax, and your soul really wants you to have a sense of well-being. So stop the struggle, relax, and and go into spirit. This show is recorded. You can find their archives, like I said, on boldbravemedia.com or or at iHeartRadio. So find Danielle on her Facebook page, Diane Dale. Danielle Dion, Psychic Medium, or you can find Nancy Smith of Angelscapes. And... um, or you could email me for a free uh, 15-minute consult if you'd like, nancy at angelscapes.net, just to get some more if you have questions and some more information. And, and for now, I want to bid you discover your soul, find your power, live a joyful and fulfilled life, and ask for help. After we've talked about the ancestors, ask for help from those on the other side, and you will get plenty of it. So uh, I'll see you next time. Be well and um, take care. This has been Angelscapes with host Nancy Smith. Tune in each week as Nancy discusses ideas, tips, and lessons to help you open to receive divine love, joy, and soul power in your life. You can discover the powerful being you really are right here on Nancy Smith's Angelscapes. been listening to the bbm global network the ideas views and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas views and opinions of the bbm global network company